What's up guys, we are back with Week 9 NFL Sunday action. Let's dive in and break down all these games and find the value out there in an action-packed Sunday. If you want to win all of your bets this weekend, hit that like button. It's good luck and show support for the channel and all the hard work we're putting in every single day. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our daily content. You can now also sign up for a channel membership by clicking the little join button right below the video. Members get exclusive early access to all NFL and college football videos and get their names up on screen just like right now. I really appreciate the support from all of you. Seeing that badge next to your comments keeps me fired up and motivated to make this channel even bigger and better. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. We have a team of experienced cappers over there for every major sport, currently covering NFL, NCAA football, NBA, NHL, UFC, and we have college basketball right around the corner. This is one of the best times of the year to be in the mix with so many sports going on. Click the link in the description if you're interested in signing up and also to join our free email list to get the occasional free or premium pick straight to your inbox. If you're interested in peer-to-peer -peer sports betting where you can make your favorite bets against real people, and pay only 1% juice, click the link in the description to check out Bet Openly, the best peer-to-peer -peer betting site on the web. Comment below with any bets you're looking at today, and we will give you our best advice on all of them. We are committed to responding to every single comment every day, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our favorite picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day, the Dallas Cowboys going on the road to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Dallas comes into this game, guys, not really having the best time. They're 3-4 and four in the season. Ezekiel Elliott is out for this game due to disciplinary reasons. Yeah, that news could star in a movie called News Kenny Doesn't Care About. Ezekiel Elliott has not been good this season. Dallas had their chances last week against the 49ers, guys. They were at San Francisco. They ended up losing 30-24 to despite going into halftime with a lead there. We, unfortunately, guys, were on Dallas in the points in that game, and it obviously did not work out. Thanks a lot to Dak throwing a couple interceptions, getting sacked a couple of times, a running game that looked terrible. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott did score a touchdown last week. He had 10 carries for 34 yards. Yeah, pretty bad stuff from Dak. Pretty bad stuff there from the Dallas running game. Tell me something you haven't heard before this season, guys, because that has been the story of the year here for the Dallas Cowboys. Just straight up not having a good time. It appears they really only have one offensive weapon out there, and that's C.D. Lamb. He had 13 receptions for 146 yards and two touchdowns, and this is a guy that Jerry Jones was hesitant to pay. Crazy, crazy stuff there, but he got paid in the end, but it's not being enough right now for this Dallas Cowboys team to get wins because that defense is terrible. They gave up 30 points last week. They couldn't stop the running game. They couldn't stop Brock Purdy from running eight times for 56 yards and a touchdown himself. Yeah, uh, they also pretty, you know, 260 yards to the air, one passing touchdown, sacked a couple of times. George Kittle had a monster day out there. Kiddo and Debo were questionable all week. Turns out they were just fine to go play in that game. The dudes combined for nearly 200 receiving yards on only 10 receptions and one touchdown there. So, yeah, just very bad stuff there from the Dallas uh, defense, generally speaking. They did not look good in that game. So we'll see what they can do here going on the road to take on the Atlanta Falcons, who come into this game 5-3 and three on the season. They're currently alone there atop the NFC South. Last week, they got a nice win at Tampa Bay, winning 31-26. to A little bit of a crazy game, but it did generally feel like, you know, Atlanta was pretty much in control. I mean, you know, after the first quarter, it was tied at halftime. They were up by 7, and then they kind of took care of business there in the second half. So, yeah, uh, decent stuff there from the Falcons, no doubt about it. Kirk had a big bounce back game. As projected, guys, Atlanta was one of our premium picks last week. Kirk Cousins coming off a loss is always a monster. He had four touchdown passes in the game, 276 yards. He turned the ball over zero zero times, and so did the Falcons. That running game looked really good there. Robinson, Algier, both having success on the ground, and on defense, that's kind of where the questions start to arise there for the Falcons. I mean, they didn't have an amazing time, but they did pick off Baker Mayfield twice. They also recovered a fumble. When you win that turnover battle three to nothing, you are going to be winning those games almost all the time. So definitely liked what we saw from Atlanta there in that win, and generally we've liked what we've seen from them this season. I'm not going to say they haven't had some bumps in the road, but overall, not a bad year for the Falcons. Falcons. They come into this game relatively healthy, so that's a nice deal for them. Obviously not something you can take as a guaranteed thing here in the NFL, but yeah, Dallas on the other hand, guys, uh, you know, they're pretty healthy on offense, might be missing one offensive lineman, but that defense continues to be very, very banged up. Dallas, they're 2-5 and five against the spread this season. They're 5-2 and two to the over. Atlanta, they're 4-4 four and four against the spread and 4-4 four and four to the over-under. Guys, I like Atlanta here. This Cowboys defense still very banged up. Their coaching situation is borderline embarrassing, dating back to last season. Season Dallas is three and nine against the spread. Go ahead and give me the Atlanta Falcons here at minus three. This is a play that is definitely going in the pinned comment. In terms of that over under of 52, I'm going to shade just slightly towards the over on that one. Uh, it's not my favorite over under play on the day. I do worry a little bit about Dallas being able to keep up with, you know, CD Lamb and Dak being their only 
offensive players essentially but I do think if you're you know bound to bet an over under on this game you want to be on that over next up guys we've got the Miami Dolphins going on the road to take on the Buffalo Bills the Dolphins come into this game two and five on the season fresh off a one point loss last week against the Arizona Cardinals in Tua's return to action after that you know concussion once again another concussion there in that loss guys I mean it was obviously a tough one you can't lose any game by one point and not feel like you could have definitely came away with the win to a one touchdown 28 of 38 from you know uh, throwing the ball not terrible uh you know one sack on the day so not a horrible night for him a chain had a great time running the ball miami was moving the ball on the ground very very well mostert vultured both those uh you know touchdowns there so you had a chain in fantasy you're probably a little bit upset but we saw tyreek hill get some action six catches for 72 yards there for him waddle not so good but generally speaking a pretty good day out there for miami they only turned they didn't turn the ball over at all so that's nice but they didn't have any answers there on defense for kyler murray or james connor really in the running game and yeah we saw a big game from trey mcbride a big day for marvin harrison jr this dolphins defense not looking so great at the moment so definitely major concerns there for miami i mean their season isn't quite over but at two and five on the year it's definitely not looking like it's headed in a great direction uh they're pretty healthy there on offense got to give them credit there that's nice on defense they're probably going to be down two members of their secondary which isn't really where you want to be going up against josh allen and the buffalo bills but we'll see what they're able to do out there against the bills who come into this game winners of three in a row they haven't been facing a very tough schedule i don't really think that changes in this game but at six and two on the year they have a stranglehold there on the afc east in that win over seattle a game they went into seattle and won 31 to 10 we saw very good stuff pretty much across the board there for buffalo i mean josh allen did get picked off once but that's not the end of the world james cook 111 yards and two touchdowns on the ground game very very good stuff there from buffalo just on offense up and down and i mean kahil shakir uh, 107 yards on nine receptions for him seems like they found another decent receiver out there so i do just expect things to get better and better uh, amari cooper only getting targeted once in the game it doesn't feel amazing so yeah that addition might not be paying off here anytime soon he is dealing with a wrist injury so we'll see how things go there but yeah um it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how this bills team progresses here down this down the stretch this season once they have to take on some tougher opponents they did look very good on defense last week only giving up you know 10 points 212 yards passing only 32 yards on the ground so very very good stuff and generating a couple of turnovers there so loved what we saw from buffalo last week generally speaking but they're taking on a team here that has given them problems over the years so we'll see how it goes uh the bills come into this game we've got amari cooper questionable like i said with that wrist injury but other than that looking fairly healthy the defense could be missing one guy in the secondary but benford is only questionable i think there's a reasonable chance he plays in this game so looking at the numbers for this one guys we have the, the bills are minus six playing at home we've got an over under of 49 and a half we're going to be concentrating on the over under for this one guys i do have a play on this game against the spread as a premium pick over there at stump the spread that over under 49 and a half i mean miami they are five and two to the under this season buffalo's four and four you know to the over under so no trends there but playing at home in this game i do think we probably want to be just slightly on that under i obviously miami wasn't very good on defense last week but the bills are pretty good you know defensive team at times and i do think miami can play better on defense than they did last week and not like the bills have a ton of offensive weapons so go ahead and give me just a slight taste there of that under Hey guys, jumping in here with a quick ad break. This is a great time to sign up at StumpTheSpread.com. Signing up for a premium membership gets you access to our entire team of cappers covering NFL, college football, NBA, NHL, UFC, and college basketball, which is right around the corner. We make things extremely easy for you with pick notifications directly to your phone and unit sizes assigned to each matchup so you know where our confidence level is on every individual play. To test out the service before you buy, join our free email list to get the occasional free or premium pick straight to your inbox. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Also, if you want to experience peer-to-peer -peer sports betting while paying almost zero juice on your plays, click the link in the description and sign up at betopenly.com. Now guys, back to the games. Next up, guys, we've got the Las Vegas Raiders going on the road here to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. The Raiders come into this game fresh off another loss. They've now dropped four in a row. They did keep things relatively competitive there against the Chiefs last week, but yeah, 27 and tw a 27 to 20 loss, not really going to get me super fired up. 
We saw Gardner Minshew throw two touchdown passes, not get intercepted in the game. He was sacked five times, so that's not ideal, and he did have a costly fumble there down the stretch, but overall, I don't think you can ask way more of him. I mean, this is kind of what Gardner Minshew is at this point. The running game didn't get going at all for the Raiders. Uh, you know, in the passing game, we didn't see any one individual wide receiver have a huge standout day. On defense, they did an okay job of holding Mahomes and company in check. They only gave up 82 running rushing yards on 29 attempts, so that's not bad. Uh, they picked Mahomes off once, so that's okay. They did only have the one turnover that they generated, but giving up 27 points to the Chiefs this season isn't really feeling like a transcendently good you know, performance there. In terms of their injury report, we see the Raiders are probably going to be missing uh, at least one offensive lineman, maybe two. Andre James, their center, is confirmed out for this game, so that's definitely a problem. In terms of their defense, they're pretty healthy guys. Uh, they might be missing a middle linebacker, but he's only questionable, so there's a good chance he eventually ends up playing in this game. So we'll see what they can do here. Going on the road to take on the Cincinnati Bengals, who uh, have to be in a little bit in desperation mode after getting basically blown out last week against the Philadelphia Eagles. We've had some bad injury news here for Cincinnati uh, this week, guys. It appears it's pretty unlikely that T. Higgins plays in this game. He's doubtful. Orlando Brown Jr. there on the offensive line is also doubtful, so pretty unlikely to see a full strength offense here for the Bengals. The defense is very close to 100%, so that's something positive to look at, but the defense didn't look too great last week, giving up 37 points against the Eagles. They didn't have any answers there for the running game. Saquon Barkley, obviously a monster. Jalen Hurts vultured three touchdowns there from Saquon, so yeah, uh, Saquon Barkley, uh, fantasy owners, me, not super happy about that. I did win my game, guys, so it's okay. Don't have to worry too much there, but generally speaking, guys, I mean, the offense clearly missed T. Higgins pretty bad. Mike Jacecki actually led the team in receiving yards, seven catches on eight targets for 73 yards. So some good stuff there, but this team can't really run the ball effectively. So lots of question marks here about the Cincinnati Bengals. And looking at the numbers of this game, guys, uh, Cincinnati's minus seven in this one. We've got an over under of 45 and a half. The Raiders four and four against the spread, five and three to the over. The Bengals four and four against the spread and five and three to the over themselves. Guys, I think this is just a spot we want to probably go with the over. 45 and a half, not a crazy crazy amount of points. T Higgins being out is what keeps me from loving the Bengals here at minus seven. So I'm probably going to generally speaking, stay away from the side. If you're forcing me to take a side here, I guess give me the Bengals minus seven, but I don't love that very much, guys. I do think this over, though, has a reasonable amount of value. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at the LA Chargers going on the road to take on the Cleveland Browns. The Chargers come to this game fresh off a 26-8 win there over the New Orleans Saints, who still didn't have Derek Carr back for that game, so they're probably feeling pretty good at 4-3 and three on the season, though. They've got a lot of work to do here down the stretch, guys. I mean, they did play relatively well against New Orleans. I've got to give them credit for that, but yeah, I mean... Yeah, it was weird. It was weird. It definitely not a normal game. I mean, Herbert did look great throwing the ball as he usually does, guys. 279 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked three times, so they're still struggling to, you know, to protect him a little bit. But overall, not a bad day. He also ran for 49 yards, not something you usually see from Justin Herbert. J.K. Dobbins was decent. I mean, 57 yards on 17 carries and one touchdown isn't amazing. But this running game for the Chargers is going to get going by hook or by crook. We saw Lad McConkey have a big day, six receptions. 111 yards, two touchdowns. So he'll be hoping that he can replicate that. And so will Justin Herbert, but we'll have to wait and see guys. Obviously not somebody that's, you know, like one of the premier wide receivers in the league in terms of their defense, giving up only eight points to the Saints is nice, but it was the Saints who had three different dudes taking snaps there at quarterback. Not a great day for them. They did an okay job of limiting Kamara and the running attack there for the Saints, but nothing amazing. And they really got shredded there by Chris Olave. So yeah, definitely question marks here for this Chargers defense. They come into this game, uh, you know, generally healthy. DJ Clark Jr. questionable there in the wide receiver group. Joey Bosa, as always, questionable. And we've got, you know, definitely, uh, you know, Fulton going to be out there in the secondary. So that's a problem. Not going to be quite the full strength Chargers team, especially on defense here as they go on the road to take on the Cleveland Browns who come into this game two and six on the season, fresh off of that crazy 29 to 24 win they got last week over Baltimore. Yeah, a lot of credit is getting given here to Jameis Winston. Everybody's acting like he did some crazy crazy transcendent thing. He did have a really good day on paper. Don't no doubt about that. 334 passing yards, three touchdowns. He was sacked twice and he looked way better than Deshaun Watson. Got to give him credit there, but he made some big mistakes that the Ravens terrible defense failed to capitalize on. So we'll see what they're able to do in this one. Nick Chubb being back 52 yards, 16 carries for him. That is a big deal from this team. Uh, Cedric Tillman had a nice day catching the ball. Elijah Moore had a good day catching the ball. Like Jerry Judy was chipping in out there. Uh, David Njoku caught a touchdown pass. Like 
this team played a lot better. Winston did fumble it away once, but throw, threw zero interceptions, although he kind of deserved to have thrown at least one more. So yeah, we'll see how things go for him today. I'm not necessarily expecting miracles from him two weeks in a row, but hey, it's not impossible. On defense, Cleveland struggled against the running attack of the Ravens. Everybody's going to struggle against that. So I'm not, you know, getting giving them too hard of a time there, but they also gave up 115 yards there to Zay Flowers. In terms of their health, guys, Cleveland's pretty healthy there on offense, unless, you know, you're worried about Deshaun Watson being out, but I don't think that's a negative. Jordan Hicks going to be out there in the linebacker core, so that's not ideal. But overall, Cleveland, pretty healthy for this game. Guys, uh, the Chargers, they're four and three against the spread, six and one to the under. Cleveland, three and five against the spread, three, five and three to the under. We've got an over under here of 42 and a half. I definitely think there's some value here on the under. Not going to see a ton of offense in this game. I mean, it's not impossible. Obviously, we've got two quarterbacks that can throw it and are going to throw it, but both teams want to run the ball here. So we'll see how that goes. Leaning towards the under in terms of the side, I do like the Chargers at minus one and a half. Yeah, I mean, the pros like the Browns a little bit, but they're forgetting what Jameis Winston is actually like at quarterback. He got super lucky last week making some big mistakes that should have cost them the game. I'm going to be on the Chargers in this one. Will it end up in the pinned comment? I'd say it's got a chance, but some of that injury news is a little bit scary. Jumping in with our first ever sportsbook ad, guys, and I am super excited to tell you about Bet Openly. They are unlike any regular sportsbook out there. Their whole goal is to facilitate peer to peer betting. So instead of them having a vested interest in you winning or losing your bet, they just want to match you up with a real person who wants the opposite side. At Bet Openly, you will be paying drastically reduced juice on your bets, close to 1% instead of the 10% you would pay at any of the big guys. Not having to fight that built in house edge sounds pretty great to me. Bet Openly supports all your favorite bets including props and parlays and get this guys you can even be the house on parlays meaning you only need a single leg to win to cash your bet most importantly bet openly will never limit your account for being a consistent winner which is something that happens all the time on the bigger sites if you're interested in signing up click the referral link in the description of this video and let's cash some bets now guys back to the games Next up, guys, we've got what is probably going to be one of the hardest games to watch of the day. We've got the New England Patriots going on the road to take on the Tennessee Titans. The Patriots come to this game fresh off a 25-22 win there over the New York Jets. Gotta be a little bit embarrassing there for the Jets, but hey, they found a way the Patriots did there to get that win, so they'll certainly take it. 25 to 22, obviously a very, very close one. Uh, we saw, you know, Drake may get knocked out of the game. He is cleared to play in this one. He's going to be starting there out of the concussion protocol. Uh, Jacoby Brissett came in, didn't look amazing. We have generally liked what we've seen from Drake May. I'm not, you know, freaking out over here and saying he's going to be amazing, but he's done some positive things. I think it's a net positive here for the Patriots that he's going to be able to start this game. In terms of the running game there, uh, we saw, you know, Drake May making it work there on the ground. He can run the ball, no doubt, uh, doubt about that. Ramondre Stevenson did have a rough time, 20 carries for 48 yards, but two touchdowns there. So good stuff there in the running game. They're going to be looking to establish the run. Obviously, it's not like they have a whole lot of good pass catching options. So that's what the New England offense is going to try to do on defense. They've got to be a little bit better against the pass. They've got to be a little bit better against the run. But overall, they were not terrible last week. And this defense, while it hasn't been great, guys, hasn't been, you know, a complete dumpster fire. Got to give them a little bit of credit here. They are only 21st in the NFL in, you know, points against. So that's not great. And they did give up 32 points to the Jaguars. Not a very good offense. So definitely lots to work on there for New England. They come into this game relatively healthy. We've got a couple guys banged up on the offensive line, but there's a good chance here that Lowe and Jordan both end up playing. On defense, we don't have anybody confirmed out. I'm a little bit worried about Kyle Duggar there at safety, but Christian Ellis, you know, I think we're going to be okay here in terms of health there for the Patriots as they go on the road here to take on the Titans, who at 1-6 and six on the year may be looking like the worst team in the NFL right now, guys. Their last time out, they got obliterated by the Detroit Lions, losing 52-14. to and we all know about that trend there where teams the week after they play the Lions have a really rough time in their next game. Yeah, that was just, this was just a blowout, guys. There's not much to take from it. Mason Rudolph made the start. He was terrible. No major shock there. Tony Pollard actually did some good things in the running game, uh, 20 carries for 94 yards, but I don't think the Lions were really that focused on stuffing the run when they were winning this game and just walking away. On defense, guys, no positive things to report for the Titans. Oh, wait, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, just pass over this, guys. Calvin really had a massive day. 10 receptions, 141 
thousand yards out here. He is doing everything he possibly can for this terrible, terrible team. But on defense, they got absolutely shredded. Couldn't stop the pass. Couldn't stop the run. Couldn't stop the trick plays. It was just an embarrassing day out there for the Titans. It's being kind of reported here that Levis might play in this game if he's healthy. But Tony Pollard, questionable. Uh, Tyler Boyd, questionable. Dylan Raduz, he is questionable for this game as well. So he may end up there with not a full-strength offensive line. And it seems very unlikely that we're going to have any version here of a full-strength Titans offense. And even if we see Will Levis play, I think if you're wanting to bet on the Patriots, that's probably what you want at this point. On defense, we also see a banged up team. Teams tend to be pretty banged up the week after they play the Lions, guys. We're not going to see a full strength the Titans secondary. Uh, you know, we could see Amani Hooker out for this game also, so it might be a very short handed secondary. And yeah, the offensive line not going to be at full strength either. So looking at the numbers for this game, guys, uh, the Titans are minus three playing at home. We've got an over under of 38 and a half. New England, two, five, and one against the spread this season, five and three to the over. Tennessee, one and six against the spread. Four, two, and one to the over. So, guys, we got some interesting trends here for this game. Home favorites coming off of a loss of 30 plus points are 24, 33, and one against the spread since 2003. So, that makes us like New England even more. Guys, I like the Patriots here. I wish it was still at plus three and a half, but it's still at plus three. We'll take that. Teams after playing the Lions this season are 0-6 against the spread. I think New England and the points, they find a way to get the job done here on the road. In terms of that over-under of 38 and a half, that's a very, very small number, but neither of these teams really get me going there on offense. So if you wanted to take a look at under 38 and a half, I could wrap my head around that, but not too interested in that one, guys. I'm much more interested here in the Patriots and the points. Next on the docket, guys, we have an NFC East showdown between the Washington Commanders and the New York Giants. The Commanders come into this game fresh off of that absolutely insane last-second Hail Mary win against the Chicago Bears, a game they obviously should have ended up losing. But hey, they managed to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, so gotta give them credit there uh, in terms of, you know, like the quarterback play that we saw from Washington in that game. Not what we've been used to seeing from Jaden Daniels, although his numbers on paper were pretty good. It just wasn't those that transcendent performance. He was dealing with a rib injury. I think it'll be a little bit better this week, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, you know, he did pass for 326 yards and a touchdown and also a run for 52 yards. So not bad stuff there, but we saw the running game for Washington really step up uh, against the Bears guys. I mean, both Robinson Jr. and Eckler had great days there on the ground. We saw Terry McLaurin catch five balls for 125 yards. So a lot of things to feel good about there for the commanders. This should have been an easy win for them. They just kept messing stuff up. And on defense, they looked very good, really limiting Caleb Williams there. Uh, they did a bad job against the run, though. So that's definitely a concern here against the Giants. But we'll see how big of a concern that actually ends up being. In terms of their health, Washington could be without Brian Robinson Jr., which is obviously a pretty big deal. Obviously, Eckler can fill in there. But he is dealing with a hamstring injury, uh, you know, Robinson Jr. is. So that's something to keep a very close eye on. Even if he goes, I'm not expecting him to be breaking any super long runs there. A hammy can be a big, big problem. But like I said, a capable backup there in Austin Eckler. Other than that, the entire offense is looking healthy, including the offensive line, and Jaden Daniels is no longer even on the injury report. On defense, Washington is fully healthy for this game, and it's not like this has been a great defensive team this season overall, but I also don't think they're a complete tragedy. They're 11th in the National Football League in points against, so expecting decent stuff from the commander's defense here as they take on the Giants, a team they beat in week two, albeit in a close game. The Giants come into this one really looking for answers out here. Uh, they took a 26-18 to loss last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers in a game that didn't even really feel that close. The Giants are only 2-6 and six overall. They're in the last place there in the NFC East. We don't know what direction they really want to go there at quarterback. There's all kinds of weird drama swirling right now around that locker room. So we'll see how things go. Daniel Jones was mediocre last week. No shocker there. 264 yards, one interception, sacked four times there against the Steelers, albeit a very good defense. So I'm not going to crap on him too hard for that, but still not amazing. Tyrone Tracy Jr. had a huge day there for New York against the Steelers, guys. 145 yards and a touchdown on 20 carries there in the running game. So that will really be what we have to watch out for here with the Commanders. Can they stop the run? And that seems like a very, very big question. But the Giants, guys, couldn't stop anyone on defense. Uh, Russell Wilson had a good game. They did sack him four times, but they could stop Najee Harris at all either. He had 114 yards on 19 carries himself. And George Pickens had a pretty good day. It just was not a good day for the Giants there on defense. Not like they've been a great defensive team this season, generally speaking.
speaking. I mean, Dayball's doing everything he can, but they're still middle of the pack. They're giving up 21.9 points per game. In terms of their injury report, the Giants are technically fully healthy here on offense, so that's something to look at. And not missing any you know current starters there on defense, but this is not the defense that they started this season out with, guys. They have lots of dudes on the IR that they wish were going to be in this starting lineup. So look at the numbers for this one, guys. We see the Giants are getting four points there at home. We've got an over-under of 44.5. Uh, Washington six one and one against the spread this season five and three to the over the Giants three and five against the spread and six and two to the under guys I am a little bit worried here about the fact that Washington is probably going to be a big public side here but Daniel Jones I don't like him man I, I just don't think it's going to work here They're, the Giants in general not looking as healthy as their injury report would you know try to trick you into thinking there's a lot of turmoil going on right now in the Giants locker room with the whole quarterback situation and whose fault this terrible terrible season is so go ahead and give me the Commanders here at minus for as a small play. I also think over 44 and a half is very, very good. I probably like that more than I like the commanders, to be honest. I think these teams are going to find a way to get the ball in the end zone. Neither defense is good. Both teams can run the ball very successfully. So give me over 44 and a half as my main lean on this game. Next on the docket, guys, we're looking at an NFC South showdown between the New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers. The Saints come into this game uh, fresh off of another loss, guys. After those first two games of the season where they looked so, so good, taking advantage of two terrible teams, Carolina and Dallas, then the wheels absolutely came off. We had a Derek Carr injury. All kinds of terrible stuff happened to this team, culminating in a 26-8 loss last week at the Chargers. But the good news is, guys, Derek Carr is going to be back for this game. The idea is that he can maybe still salvage something from this season for the Saints, who have just been having a very rough time. We saw terrible quarterback play from the Saints last week, no doubt about that. Kamara did what he could in the running game, so did Taysom Hill. He's starting to make some noise, and Chris Olave had a very good game, catching eight balls there for 107 yards. But, man, these are not the kind of numbers we were seeing from this offense offense when they had Derek Carr under center there for their first couple games. Things were looking much, much better. So we'll see if they can turn it on here. I'm expecting positive things here for this offense. Obviously getting your starting quarterback is, you know, back under center. Maybe the biggest deal you could possibly have for an offense on defense, guys. They didn't have a great time against the Chargers. Gave up a lot to the pass, a lot to the run. Uh, in terms of, you know, overall health for the defense, they're going to be missing at least two starters for this game. So that's a bit of a concern here. I mean, a couple of uh, missing one secondary guy, one linebacker. I mean, that's not ideal. But on def on offense, guys are looking pretty healthy. They could have a fully healthy offensive line for the first time in a really long time. So we'll see if that actually happens. But regardless, the offensive line looking like it's in a much, much better place than it was even last week. And certainly since Carr went down. So we'll see what the Saints can do here going on the road to take on the hapless Carolina Panthers. Panthers, who are one and seven this season. They're definitely throwing their hat in the ring as one of the worst couple teams in the NFL. Last week, they lost 28 to 14 again at the Denver Broncos. So that's not great. We saw once again, guys, uh, not, not Andy Dalton under center. We had Bryce Young out there and he wasn't as bad as he was at some points earlier in the season, but two touchdowns, two interceptions, 224 yards, and sacked twice. Not amazing. Didn't make up for it really on the ground. Chubba Hubbard, uh, 56 yards on 15 carries. Not an amazing day from him either. This Broncos defense is looking pretty legit, and yeah, just did not see amazing stuff there from Carolina. They uh, continue to just flounder along. The defense didn't look very good either. They gave a lot to the pass and a lot to the run and forced a grand total of two turnovers, both via the fumble. Kind of mistakes there by the offense rather than, you know, great plays there by the defense. In terms of their health, uh, they are going to be decimated in terms of wide receiver options, guys. That's not looking good. Tommy Tremble could also be out there. We're not going to see a full strength offensive line here for the Panthers either. And they kind of continue to sell guys off. And the defense, while, you know, technically they have, you know, 11 healthy starters, they are missing tons of guys for the season that have just, you know, not made it and are on the IR. So maybe not for the season, but a lot of these guys are out for the season. It is looking very, very bleak now for the Carolina Panthers. So looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Panthers getting at least seven points. We've got an over under of 43 and a half. Can't give you my lean on the side in this game, guys. I mean, the Saints three and five against the spread, five and three to the over. Carolina one and seven against the spread and six and two to the over themselves with a tiny over under number here, guys, of only 43 and a half. I think the over is in great shape in this game. Once again, another over spot, I think very, very probable. I think we're going to see both teams be able to move the ball at least somewhat. 
you know, the Saints getting their starting quarterback back. Carolina, they're going to be running out, you know, another not great quarterback option. But regardless, getting to 43 and a half points against a slightly banged up Saints defense seems very, very reasonable to me. Next up, guys, we have one of the most interesting games, at least to me, out on this slate. We've got the Denver Broncos going on the road to take on the Baltimore Ravens. The Broncos come into this game playing well, fresh off of that 28 to 14 win there over the Carolina Panthers, like we were just talking about. They're five and three on the season, so not terrible. They're, you know, obviously well behind Kansas City there in the AFC West, but Denver making a case for themselves as not a terrible team. They played well against Carolina last week. They played well against the Saints the week before that. Not like those are the toughest opponents, but still got to give them some credit. Bo Nix continues to look great out there. I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing from him as the season goes on. They are not treating him with kid gloves. They're making him force it down the field, do whatever he needs to do. And yeah, 284 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, sacked a couple times. Very good stuff out there. He did run for a touchdown. And we also saw the Denver running game look very, very good. I mean, McLaughlin and Williams definitely doing positive things out there. And yeah, Cortland Sutton caught 100 yards last week. That had to feel pretty good. Uh, yeah, just a very good day across the board. If we could have cut out those couple of fumbles, things would have really looked elite there for Denver. And they looked good on defense, uh, albeit against the Carolina Panthers. So I'm not going to give them a ton of credit there for playing well on defense against the Panthers. But over the course of the season, they're third in the NFL, allowing only 15 points per game. They had a good game there against Pittsburgh early in the season, a really good game against, albeit a banged up Tampa Bay team. But they've put up some very good defensive numbers over the course of the season, albeit not against the toughest schedule, but still Gotta give them some credit. In terms of health, the offense comes into this game fully healthy. The defense going to be missing their safety. Lockie's going to be out for this game. But other than that, a pretty healthy overall team here for the Denver Broncos, who their third in pressure rate and just in general, a very solid defense. So we'll see what they can do here going up against the Baltimore Ravens, who are in a huge bounce back spot after losing last week against Jameis Winston and the Cleveland Browns. This Ravens defense just continues to be terrible. They're really letting Lamar Jackson down. Honestly, the dude's having an insane season last week against Cleveland guys I mean the offense did everything you could reasonably expect 24 points not a ton though so I mean you know room for improvement for sure Derrick Henry 73 yards 11 carries one touchdown Lamar Jackson 23 of 38 so not the best completion rate but he also passed for almost 300 yards and two touchdowns there he was sacked three times yeah, I mean, we saw Lamar run for 46 yards on eight carries. Not something they need him to be doing a crazy amount of here. You know, they want to be saving that kind of those kind of performances for the playoffs. But it feels like they can't really do that when they have a defense that's giving up 29 points to Jameis Winston. Uh, they're giving up a ton to the running game. They're dropping free interceptions. Just not a very good defensive unit, guys. Not very good at all, unfortunately. I mean, they are somewhere in the bottom, way well in the bottom third of the NFL. They're giving up 26.1 points per game. That is not going to work. Even if your team is, you know, averaging 30 points a game, like congratulations, you cannot be that bad on defense. So we'll see if they can bounce back here a little bit. The offense comes in this game fully healthy. The defense, not so much, guys. Uh, they could have a one defense defensive lineman out. Uh, we're not sure if Travis Jones is going to be able to play in this game or not. And Marlon Humphrey is also listed as questionable there in the secondary. So we'll see how that goes. Looking at the numbers for this one, guys, the Ravens are minus nine and a half. We've got an over under a 46 and a half out there. Denver six and two against the spread this season, five and three to the over. Baltimore four, three and one against the spread and seven and one to the over themselves. Guys, I'm leaning towards Denver and the points in this game. They're going to sling it. They don't let up regardless of the score. I don't really trust the Ravens coaches, especially on defense to make adjustments. It feels like the correct price on this game would be somewhere around a seven and nine, nine and a half seems like a gift to me. Obviously, we're betting on a rookie quarterback playing on the road, so that doesn't feel amazing. The Ravens are in a huge bounce back spot after losing to the Browns, so that doesn't feel amazing. But guys, Lamar Jackson is 8, 19, and 1 against the spread as a favorite of three or more. Bo Nix is 4 on the road, 4 0 on the road this season. Sign me up for the Denver Broncos getting nine and a half points, guys. This is definitely going in the pinned comment. It is a play I think has a lot of value. In terms of the over-under here of 46 and a half, I'm going to be siding here slightly towards the under. I don't think we're seeing this crazy amount of offense, but to be honest, guys, I don't care about the over-under in this game. I like Denver and the points. Rolling right along through these games, guys, we've got the Jacksonville Jaguars going on the road to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. The Jaguars come into this game two and six on the season, fresh off of that close loss there against the Green Bay Packers last week. 
a game that they should have had chances to win, really, if they could have limited those terrible early game mistakes. But yeah, a 30 to 27 loss for them coming off of that win against the Patriots. Yeah, can't be feeling too good about the direction of their season. Trevor Lawrence did pass for 300 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, sacked one time. The running game did look good there by the end. Uh, you know, some positive things there. We also saw Trevor Lawrence run for a touchdown. So yeah, definitely some positive stuff there for Jacksonville, but the defense did not look great. They even didn't look great against Malik Willis when he was in there for the Packers after the Jordan Love injury. They couldn't stop the run. Uh, yeah, just not a great defense overall, guys. And the Jaguars, not like they've been a great defensive team this season. They're tied for 29th in the NFL. They come into this game and not healthy at all. This is a decimated Jacksonville team, guys. Uh, Travis Etienne Jr. on the injury report. Uh, Bigsby on the injury report. Brian Thomas Jr. questionable. Gabe Davis questionable. Like, this could be a team without basically any offensive weapons for this game. I don't think they'll all miss this game, but we do know that the offensive line is going to be missing at least one starter, possibly two. This offense and just this Jaguars team in general, not in a very good spot. The defense is technically fully healthy, so we'll see if they're able to step up a little bit, but that has not been the case so far this season. That being said, they did just play a very close game last week against a very good Green Bay Packers team. So we'll see what they can do here. Going on the road to take on the Philadelphia Eagles, who are now 5-2 and two on the season, fresh off of back-to-back -back blowout wins. They blew out the Giants at New York, and they blew out the Bengals at Cincinnati last week. So yeah, Eagles have to be feeling pretty good about how things are going. They're only one game back now of Washington there in the NFC East. They, uh, you know, they're, they're playing pretty well. No doubt about it. Good things right now cooking out there for the Philadelphia Eagles. We saw Jalen Hurts look good last week, uh, you know, both on the ground and through the air. Got to be a little bit frustrating. He keeps taking those touchdowns there from Saquon Barkley, but Saquon Barkley has been one of the uh, best acquisitions any team has made in recent history. The dude has been an absolute monster out there. Nice to see him playing for a team that actually has something to play for. Having uh, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown back has made a huge difference for this team in you know the passing game. And on defense, guys, obviously coming off a game where they only allowed 17 points and had an interception and a fumble recovery has to feel pretty great. This defense is looking good out there. They're seventh in the National Football League, allowing only 18.9 points per game. In terms of health, we do see Dallas Godert. He is going to be out for this game probably, and Darius Slade Jr. is going to be out there on the defense for the Eagles, but that's pretty much their entire injury report right there, guys. Other than that, they are fully healthy, so things looking up right now for the Eagles, generally speaking. Looking at the numbers of this game, the Eagles are minus 7.5, so over a touchdown here, we've got an over-under of 46. Jacksonville, 4-4 four four against the spread, 5-3 to the over. The Eagles are 4-3 against the spread, and 4-3 and to the under. Guys, I'm looking at the over in this game as a definite possibility. Over 46, unless we see some crazy weather uh, build up that could mess that up, but I do think we're going to see a good amount of offense out there. Unfortunately, I can't give you my lean on the side, but both teams showing trends here towards the over, and I I think 46, not quite a high enough number. I make this like 48 or 49. So 46 feels like some reasonable value. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Chicago Bears going on the road here to take on the Arizona Cardinals. The Bears come into this game, guys, obviously fresh off of that heartbreaking Hail Mary loss that they had last week at Washington. Yeah, not the way you're supposed to lose football games, guys. Lots of questions here swirling around the Bears locker room and all that. Like, blame, I think, has pretty solidly been assigned. I don't think it should only be on the players, though. Some of that has to be on the coaches, but I think it is. So I think they're, you know, kind of in a bounce back spot here. Definitely a game they should have won despite Caleb Williams not playing great. Only 10 of 24 for 131 yards. He was sacked three times. He made up for a good amount of it there running the ball, but it wasn't an incredible day. DeAndre Swift did look amazing running the ball. 18 carries, 129 yards, and a touchdown there for him against, you know, a pretty mediocre Washington defense, but still got to give the dude some credit. Uh, Caleb Williams fumbling it away once. That's not a great look. Definitely mistakes there to clean up for the Bills. On defense, obviously not having a great time there against Washington, although not terrible. If they would have just, you know, kept their focus for one more play, they should have been walking away from that game with a win. But hey, you make mistakes. Sometimes mistakes happen. The Bears' uh, health in terms of, you know, their injury report for this game, they're going to be missing at least Braxton Jones there on the offensive line. Uh, Traven Jenkins could be out as well. So we might be dealing with a banged up offensive line here for the Bears. On defense, guys, uh, Montez Sweet is going to be back. I think he's going to be playing this game. Uh, we're going to be missing Brisker there at safety. Gordon, unlikely to play. It's starting to look like there. So we'll see how that goes. But overall, the Bears a little bit banged 
lined up for this game. So definitely something to be taking into consideration here as we look at their opponent, the Arizona Cardinals, who come into this game 4-4 four and four on the season. They've now won two in a row, wins over the Chargers and the Miami Dolphins. I'm not exactly going to freak out about that. They won that game at Miami last week by a grand total of one point, winning 28-27. to 27. So, you know, well played. Congratulations. But, you know, Miami, I know they had two of back, but it just doesn't feel like an amazing win there. Kyler Murray, 26 of 36, 307 yards and two touchdowns. He was sacked zero times in the game. He's all of a sudden looking quite a bit better. James Conner didn't have a great game there on the ground. 20 carries for only 53 yards, but both Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison Jr. went nuts there. I mean, catching nine and six passes respectively, combining for 235 yards and one touchdown. This could have been an even bigger day for both of them. So they were nuts out there. Loving what we're seeing here from the Arizona Cardinals offense at the moment. The defense, maybe not so much. They got shredded by the running attack there. They didn't do a great job against Tua. They sacked him one time, generated zero turnovers in the game. So lots of questions here about this Cardinals defense who, yeah, not having an amazing season, guys. They were 24th in the NFL in points allowed per game. In terms of their injury report, the offense, fully healthy. That is a big, big deal. A healthy offensive line healthy skill players. This offense is poised to have a very good day in terms of their defense. Might be missing a couple guys there on the defensive line. Probably only one. We'll see how that shakes out, but the secondary is healthy at least, so there's some positives out there, but you really have to be able to stop the run here if you want to stop the Chicago Bears, and that remains something of a question mark, guys. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Cardinals are one and a half point favorites at home. We've got an over-under of 44 and a half out there. The Bears, 4-2-1 and one against the spread this season, 4-3 and three to the under. Arizona, 5-3 and three against the spread and four, three, and one to the over. Guys, it looks like we've got a lot of, you know, professional money coming in on the Bears. They're saying they should be two and a half point favorites and instead they're now underdogs, but I'm not really super sold on this one either way, to be honest. You could convince me of either side on this game. There's just not a whole lot of difference in my opinion. I do think the Cardinals have the better offense. I don't think either team has that crazy of a defense. I know the Bears' defense should be better on paper, and it has been at some points this season, but recently it hasn't really been wowing me. So my slight, slight, tiny lean in this game is the Arizona Cardinals minus one and a half. I do not love this one. It's not going anywhere near the pin comment. In terms of the over-under of 44 and a half, that's not going anywhere near the pinned comment either. I can see this be a very low scoring or very high scoring game. If you're forcing me for a side here on the over under, I guess give me a tiny lean towards the over, but really guys, this is not a game that I'm interested in at all. Next up guys, I'm looking at the Detroit Lions going on the road here to take on the Green Bay Packers in an NFC North showdown. This is one of the premier games of the day, guys. The Lions come into this one fresh off of a blowout win there over the Tennessee Titans, winning 52 to 14. An absolute demolition there. Obviously, a, one of the best teams in the NFL against one of the worst. Yeah, the Lions pretty much did whatever they wanted in that game. They threw it when they wanted to throw it. They ran it when they wanted to ran it, run it. Everything was working out. Not a ton that we can take from that game, to be honest. They didn't turn the ball over. Goff was sacked four times, so that's not ideal, but they played really well. They did give up 94 rushing yards, so that's not great, but other than that, not a lot of negatives to find here for the Lions, who, you know, come into this game. Uh, we do see Jameson Williams there suspended. That's not ideal. Definitely, you know, cutting down on their offensive of weapons a little bit. On defense, they're going to be missing at least two starters, Josh Pascal and Malcolm Rodriguez. So yeah, going to be a little bit banged up there on the defensive line and a little bit banged up there, you know, in the linebacker group, which is a concern here playing against a Green Bay Packers team that, you know, likes to run the ball. So we'll see what they can do here taking on a division rival. It's going to be pretty interesting to see what Jordan Love can do. He's technically listed as questionable. All the news that I'm seeing, it appears that he's going to play. But if you watch that game against Jacksonville last week, I am absolutely shocked that they're going to be running him back out there, guys. That leg, it's being reported as a groin injury. That seems like bullshit to me, if I'm being honest. He did not seem like he could move around at all. Definitely seemed like a knee situation, and it looked really, really bad against Jacksonville. Even came out for a while there. So, yeah, not expecting good things from Jordan Love, but we'll see. I could be wrong. Definitely a lot of a lot of people out there that think he's going to be just fine. So we'll see how Jordan Love does in general against the Jaguars. I mean, they did what they needed to do and eventually managed to get that win. But, yeah, uh, running the ball was the name of the game, guys. Josh Jacobs, a huge... Huge game out there. Malik Willis did a good job running the ball while he was out there. Jordan Love did throw another interception. And when your base isn't good, like things can be tough. But we'll see what he can do out there. Obviously, you know, not a crazy day for anybody in the receiving game. On defense, they looked good at times and they looked bad at times. Very vulnerable there, you know, to some deep passing there from Trevor Lawrence. Not something we've said a ton of times. And they gave up a lot there to the run. Generally speaking, guys, how do we feel about the Packers defense? Well, 
before last week, I would have said some good things, but now I'm a little bit worried. They are still 12th in the NFL in points allowed, so got to give them some credit in terms of their health. Obviously, Josh Jacobs being questionable is a big, big deal. He is dealing with an ankle issue, so going to be monitoring that closely. They're going to need him to be at 100% for this game. Uh, you know, Josh Myers being doubtful there. Missing your starting center is a pretty big deal. And on defense, they're relatively healthy. They are going to be missing Evan Williams there. They're starting safety, but other than that, looking like they're going to have a relatively healthy team. Looking at the numbers for this one, guys, we see the Packers getting three points at home. We've got an over-under of 48. Can't give you my side on this one, guys. Sorry about it. Don't get mad at me. Don't roast me down in the comments, but we do have premium members that get first dibs on these NFL plays. In terms of the numbers, guys, Detroit 6-1 against the spread, 4-3 to the over. Green Bay 4-4 four four against the spread, 4-3-1 to the over. We've got an over-under of 48 out there, which, to be honest, seems a little bit high to me. I think we could see a lower-scoring game in this one, possibly. It's not one of my favorite plays. It's not going in the pinned comment, but... I do think you want to take a little bit of a look at that under if you are determined to bet an over-under on this game. Next up, guys, we're looking at the LA Rams going on the road to take on the Seattle Seahawks. The Rams come into this game playing well. All of a sudden, they got a 30-20 to win last week against the Minnesota Vikings, so that's got to feel pretty good. They're 3-4 and four on the season. They're only one game back of Arizona, who is shockingly there in the top spot in the NFC West. We'll see what the Rams can do in this one. I mean, against Minnesota, definitely lots of positives out there, guys. No doubt about that. Uh, I'm not going to say they they fully controlled the game. They were losing after the first quarter, but they never felt like they were out of it. Matthew Stafford had a huge game, four touchdown passes, one interception, sacked zero times. Kyron Williams had a big game. That dude is a monster. 23 carries for 97 yards for him. Puka Nakua actually led the team in receiving yards with 106. Cooper Cup caught a touchdown pass, so nice to see both guys back out there and playing well, but the qu big question for the Rams offense in this game is Puka Nakua going to be healthy. He's dealing with a knee issue. Is He is expected to be a available for this game. So we'll see how effective he is out there on a messed up knee. That can be definitely a concern, but you've got Cooper Cup out there. Naku is going to take up at least some attention. I don't think we need to be too alarmed here for the Rams wide receiver group in terms of their defense. Uh, you know, they haven't been amazing. They were pretty good last week. Got to give them some credit. They did limit the, uh, you know, the Minnesota running game pretty well. They sacked Darnold three times, but didn't generate an interception, didn't generate any uh, turnovers. So definitely some concerns there about the Rams defense defense as they take on the Seattle Seahawks, who are straight up not having a good time after getting off to that 3-0 and start, guys. They have lost four out of the last five games. They got blown away last week by Buffalo. Obviously, a kind of predictable loss there. I mean, we were on the Bills in a big way, and they came through for us, so we'll definitely take that, but yeah, a 31-10 to win, that's a little bit embarrassing there. Seattle would have wanted to put up a better fight, but they just couldn't get the job done. They obviously weren't at full strength for that game either, so that's, you know, that's tough to deal with, but Overall, guys, a bad day for Geno Smith. Zero running game got going. Obviously, they were getting blown out, so that's a problem. They turned the ball over a couple times. Like, just a loss they're going to be wanting to forget. And in terms of health for this game, DK Metcalf still going to be out. Noah Fant going to be out for this one. So the offense, not at full strength at all. The defense going to be missing. Probably Ernest Jones, the fifth there in the linebacker core, but... Other than that, not too many health concerns. Um, the Rams, they're 2-5 and five against the spread. Seattle, 2-5-1 and one against the spread. Both teams showing trends towards the over here. And with a total of only 48, I definitely think the over has some pretty good value, guys. I think you want to be on over 48 pretty often. I'm not going to say it's a lock or anything like that. Obviously, we're a little bit worried about the, you know, the Seattle offense right now. Are they going to be able to produce? But that Rams defense is pretty bad. So definitely want to give me a look here at the over. Last but not least, guys, we are looking at the Sunday night football matchup between the Indianapolis Colts, who are going on the road to take on the Minnesota Vikings. The Colts come into this game fresh off of a 23-20 loss there at Houston. A tough loss for sure. But guys, uh, they decided to switch it up. We are no longer going to be seeing Anthony Richardson there under center. They are switching it back to Joe Flacco. So it'll be interesting to see how this team responds to a quarterback change. It's going to be the second time we've seen Flacco out there. And he did some positive things. But the problem with Anthony Richardson was the dude went 10 of 32 last week against the Texans. I don't think there's really an argument to be made that Joe Flacco is not a better passing quarterback than him right now. But you need to be developing this young guy for the future. I'm not sure what the plan is. The word is that this is being, you know, made to happen by the you know by the ownership and not necessarily by the coaching staff so we'll see what kind of impact that can have on this team chemistry and stuff like that Jonathan Taylor in the running game we're not worried about him great day against the Texans guys 20 carries 105 yards and a touchdown so good stuff there we saw Josh Downs have 
have a big game catching the ball. Four receptions for 109 yards for him, so that's going to feel good. And I'm sure all of the wide receivers, guys, all the pass catchers, got to be pretty happy to see Joe Flacco out there, I would guess. In terms of their defense, didn't look so hot last week. They couldn't stop Joe Mixon in the running game. They gave up 285 passing yards, only had a couple of sacks. They did generate one turnover, so there's that. But overall, guys, this Colts defense, not necessarily a right home about them kind of situation. Although, Maybe I'm a little bit too harsh. They are still 13th in the NFL, giving up 21.5 points per game. So we'll see what they can do here going up against the Minnesota Vikings, who have suddenly lost two in a row after starting their season off 5-0. and Losing against Detroit by two points, all right, you know, I'll cut you some slack for that. But losing at the Rams 30-20, to all of a sudden people are going to start asking questions about how good this Minnesota team actually is. Um, you know, Darnold looked good, two touchdown passes, sacked three times, 240 yards there. Aaron Jones couldn't quite get going in the running game, only 58 yards on 19 carries for him. So that was a big problem for them. Obviously, Justin Jefferson just continues to put up numbers, guys. 115 yards on eight receptions for him. So very good stuff there. On defense, the Vikings did not have any answer there for the uh, you know the passing attack there of the Rams. And while the Colts don't have as dynamic of uh, you know pass catching options as the Rams had last week, you know that's a definite problem. Definitely something you have to worry about there if you are a Vikings fan. And yeah, I mean their offense comes into this game fully healthy, so that's got to feel great. But the defense is going to be missing at least one linebacker so that's a problem but other than that they're healthy so maybe the vikings can return to form here a little bit we'll have to wait and see though guys over the course of the season they've been a good defense ninth in the nfl in points against but yeah there uh, there's been questions over the last couple games so we'll see what they can do out there um looking at the numbers for this game guys the vikings are five and a half point favorites playing at home we've got an over under of 46 and a half obviously like i said joe flacco starting this game for the colts the Vikings, they are 7-0 against this red in the first quarter, and their defense is, you know, top top of the pile. Maybe number one in a you know in several different run defense metrics. The Colts, they're 7-1 against the spread this season. They are 5-3 to the under. Minnesota, 5-2 against the spread, and 4-3 and to the under themselves. Guys, I'm not too worried about Joe Flacco taking over for this team. I think it's a good thing, generally speaking, in the right now. Give me the Colts here getting five and a half points. It's a weird situation. I'm a little bit worried about the locker room and stuff like that, but I do think the Colts and the points is the play, and it's probably going in the pin common, if I'm being honest, in terms of the over-under there of 46 and a half. I'm definitely leaning a bit here towards the over. Both teams are going to try to run the ball, and that might slow things down a bit, but I think both quarterbacks are going to put up some numbers. I don't love either defense in this spot, so give me a slight lean towards the over as well. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.